As we jump into God's word, we're in Jeremiah chapter 50 today. And here's what I want you to do before we jump into the word of God this morning. I want every single person, do me a favor, get up from where you are. This is not nothing weird. Go and find um, a jar or a cup and get some oil and put that oil in the jar or cup or, or that, whatever it is. Every person, everybody stand up wherever you are in your house, your home. And uh, I need you to get a, I need you to get some oil for this sermon. I'm dead serious. Um, I need you to get some oil for this service. Come on. Come on. Everybody, come on. Everybody up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Come on. I'm singing while y'all get the oil. Sins far away, we rise and he justified. Freed me forever. One day he's coming back. Glorious day. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. You got your oil? Rising, he justified. Freed me forever. One day he's coming back. Glorious day. We're going to use that oil uh, in this sermon today, and so keep it handy with you. We're going to jump into God's Word. Uh, grab your Bibles. Go to Jeremiah chapter 50 with me. Jeremiah 50. I pray you guys have been blessed by this series in Jeremiah. Uh, it's been eye-opening uh, for a lot of us, and uh, the emails and the texts I've received is, uh, affirm that, and so I'm grateful for all of you. Jeremiah 50 today, and I'm really excited um, and anticipating uh, what God wants to share with us here. Listen to the word of the Lord. This is the message the Lord spoke to Babylon and the Babylonian people through Jeremiah the prophet. Announce to the nations, lift up the banner and tell them, speak the whole message and say, Babylon will be captured. The god Bel will be put to shame. The god Marduk will be afraid. Babylon's gods will be put to shame and her idols will be afraid. A nation from the north will attack Babylon and make it like an empty desert. No one will live there. Both people and animals will run away. The Lord says at that time, all the people of Israel and Judah will come together They'll cry and look for the Lord their God. Those people ask how to get to Jerusalem, and they'll start in that direction. They'll come and join themselves in the Lord. They'll make an agreement with him that will last forever, an agreement that will never be forgotten. I want to wrestle for a few moments this morning with this thought on our minds, expensive tears. Expensive, expensive, expensive tears. Go back to verse number one of Jeremiah chapter 50. So here's what's happening in the text. The people of Babylon, remember, came and attacked and destroyed the people in Israel. When they came and attacked and destroyed the people of Israel, the Bible tells us that we came down, they destroyed their temple, destroyed their space because God had told them where the people of Israel were. God had ordained Babylon to become these enemies to the people of Israel. In the beginning of Jeremiah chapter three, it tells us that God had, had selected people from the north, Babylon, to come down and destroy Israel. So now around 547, 547 BC, the people of Israel, I'm on holy ground, so I'm taking my shoes off today. Uh, the people of Israel now, the people of Israel, again, they've, 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 they've gone through Babylonian exile. And at the end of Babylonian exile, God says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring my people back home, take them back to Jerusalem. And as they go home, Babylon will be destroyed. And here's what God said he's going to do. Look at the text. God says, I'm going to send people from the north to come to Babylon. The people from the north coming from Babylon will be Persia. So God shows us some sort of poetic justice, if you will, that it was Babylon from the north that came and destroyed Israel. And it would be Persia from the north that would come and destroy Babylon. Now, this was a big deal to hear that God was going to send something from the north. And here's the reason that's a big deal is in the Hebrew, the north it means something hidden, that God is going to reveal something that's hidden to come and get the people. Um, it could have been the way that the north is still repli- uh, the north was referred to is on the north side of the, 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 the place of sacrifice. On the north side was the hidden, the important sacrifice. It could have been the, the, the looking towards hills in, 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 in the north. The reason that you're looking at the word north, it could have been the vision of Ezekiel that came from the word north. It could have been for people in Jeremiah 5, the Babylon was coming from the north. So now God says, I'm sending something that's been hidden from you. Something you haven't given attention to that's going to come and destroy you. Watch this because Babylon, I want you to realize that you've still been worshiping idol gods. 
You've been worshiping Bel, you've been worshiping Nebo, you've been worshiping Marduk. Nebuchadnezzar even finds his own name from the, the god Nebo. We've talked about these gods before. These were the two highest gods, and these two gods are gods that they were worshiping and idolizing. God wanted to show Babylon, watch this, that Babylon, the reason you conquered Israel was not because of you, Babylon. The reason you conquered Israel was not because of your idol gods. The reason you conquered Israel is because I, God, gave you the insight, the understanding, and the, and, the, and, the, and the knowledge of where Israel was because I needed Israel back. And as soon as you completed your journey and you never turned your face back to me, God says, I'm going to send Persia to come and destroy you. Church, and so God destroys them. And here's, and as God destroys them, he tells Israel, go back to the city. Go back home, Israel, and don't be concerned about what I'm going to do to your enemies. God tells Israel in chapter, chapter 50, verse number 4, he says, I need you to go home. I need you to go back home. I need you to go back to Jerusalem. And as you're going there, here's what I need you to do. I'm going to make you change your posture as you return back home. Because I don't want you to waste your energy focused on what I'm going to do to your enemies. Because they're going to pay for their idolatry. They're going to pay for what they did against me, God. So don't you get so consumed with what I'm going to do to Babylon that you miss out that I'm restoring you back home. And I want to pause there because as I read this text, it's very easy for us to get consumed with everything after verse 5. Because if you read through the rest of Jeremiah 50, God does some terrible stuff to the Babylonians. Oh, he's wiping out their cattle. He's making, he's setting traps for them. He's taking land from them. He's pick, telling them to pick up dead bodies. They're never going to have crops. They're not going to produce. God is going to destroy Babylon. And I want to give a word to some of you under the sound of my voice this morning. Quit being so consumed with whether or not God is going to take care of your enemies. Quit being so consumed with how God is going to do things to people who are against you. We spend way too much time consumed with how God is going to take care of the Bible. God, do you see me? Do you love me? Will you take care of my enemies? And God shows us in Jeremiah 50, I will destroy and take care of every single thing, not that's against you, but that's been against me. Their focus was on their idol gods, thinking their idol gods gave them the insight. They gave them the, the ability to go and destroy. That gave them the strength to destroy, realizing that your idol gods are no match for when God says someone from the hidden place is going to come get you. And I think in this world right now, church, we, we're living in a country and a world that is so visceral, built on hatred and division. I want to let you know, quit being so consumed with your enemies and don't think you need to rush God to take care of your enemies. Because if you got more consumed with the reality that God gives you in Jeremiah 50 of going home, I'd be more apt to rejoice over where I'm headed than to destroy the people that took me where I am. I'd be more apt to rejoice over the place where God is taking me than to destroy the people who were there in places that represent sin for me. I, I wonder what it would be like for us to lean more into our current relationship than waiting for them to do to us like our exes did to us. I wonder what it would be like for us to lean more into our current jobs, to be so consumed with how other jobs treated us. God says, go home, Israel. I got Babylon. And as I pray through this text, and as I prayed, God, what do you need me to share with the people? Verse 4 and 5 really arrested my attention. Look at the text. God says, at that time, the people of Israel and Judah will come together. They're going to cry and look for the Lord their God. Those people will ask how to go to Jerusalem. They'll start in that direction. They'll come and join themselves in the Lord. They'll make an agreement with him that will last forever, an agreement that will never be forgotten. God tells the people of Israel, go home. And it's interesting because God says, first of all, as you guys head home, first of all, Israel and Judah will be united once again. Now, to understand what's happening in here, I want you to take your Bibles, flip with me to Jeremiah chapter 3. Flip with me to Jeremiah 3. I want to show you this so you know I'm not making this stuff up today. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 3. God says, Israel, go home. And this is what's happening on your journey back home. And I want you to see this. Go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Go to Jeremiah chapter 3 down to verse number 14. Jeremiah chapter 3 down to verse number 14. Look at what it says. Come back to me, you unfaithful children, says the Lord, because I'm your master. I will take one person from every city and two from every family group, and I'll bring you to Jerusalem. Then I will give you new rulers who will be faithful to me, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. And in those days, there'll be many of you in the land, says the Lord. At that time, people will no longer say, I remember the Ark of the Agreement. They won't think about it anymore or remember it or miss it or make another one. At that time, people will call Jerusalem the throne of God. 
And all nations will come together in Jerusalem to respect the Lord. They will not follow the stubborn, even hearts anymore. In those days, the family of Judah will join the family of Israel, and they'll come together from a land in the north to the land I gave their ancestors. Do you see? I want you to see that Jeremiah prophesied this back in Jeremiah chapter 3. And now in Jeremiah 50, the people are able to return home and live into the prophecy. If there's something you never get from me before, if God says it, it's going to come to pass. It just may not come to pass when you want it to come to pass. God tells them, return back to Jude, return back to Jerusalem, and Israel and Judah are going to be together. And here's, look at what God tells them to do on the journey. God says, as you're on the journey, I want you to cry on the journey. I'm getting someplace this morning. God says, God says, I want you to go, and the text does not say, the way it's written in some of our translations, go and weep. God says, weep and go. In essence, God says, as you head home, I want you to weep on the way home. God says, watch this, that your crying is not a representation of where you've come, representation that you're going through something. It's a recognition of what you're coming out of. And I want you to cry going forward. God says there's something powerful, church, about when we cry. And he tells them that when you've been freed from your enemies, when you've been freed from what you've gone through, when you've been freed from exile, as you go home, I'm not telling you to rejoice. I'm not telling you to have a praise break. I'm not telling you to shout and scream. I'm not telling you to focus on your enemies. I'm telling you, you and Judah are going to be back together. And as you go, cry going forward. That I'm going home and I'm weeping on the way home. Black and brown people, under the sound of my voice, we've been so taught our entire lives that crying is not a sign of strength, a sign of weakness. And it's the same thing that's been even shown in research books and how we were treated even in slavery, right? That black people have thicker skin. Um, Latinx, and there's, 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 recent, there's recent research as of 2016. There's research in a nursing handbook, <clears throat> a nursing textbook, sorry, that said that Latinx, Latin, Latina and Latino men and women, um, they can withstand more pain because they pray harder, dead serious. And because they pray more, this isn't a textbook that's being taught to nurses, because they pray more, go ahead, they don't need to have anything that's gonna take away pain in their bodies because we see that their brown skin makes them pray more. The same thing goes for black people. um, That same textbook said that black and brown, black people have thicker skin. Black women don't need uh, to have anything to help them with pain in pregnancy because they can handle the pain. They said the same things about Asian Americans. They said the same thing about how they pray, how they seek, and how they understand nature and the world. In essence, we've been taught and inundated that our skin is thicker. We have to have so much power, have so much strength, and have so much wherewithal that everybody else can cry but us. Everybody else can weep but us. And I don't know about you, but as I look at 2020, as I look at everything going on in our world, I think a whole lot of us can use a real good cry. I do. I I believe a whole lot of us will be freed. We just had a good cry. And I want to help you understand why that's so important because God says, I want you to come out of exile. And when you come out of exile, I'm not asking you to have a praise break. I'm not telling you to focus on your enemies. I'm I'm telling you as you go back home, as you go forward, I want you to cry as you go forward. Because your crying is not a representation of what you're in. Your crying is a representation of where I'm trusting you to go. And God says, as y'all go, cry. Because I'm remembering what exile was. I'm remembering exile. I'm talking to everybody under the sound of my voice. I want you to take a pause. We don't lament enough as people. We don't lament. We don't take time to weep and to let the hurt that actually hurts be something that hurts so that we can heal because we're constantly moving forward. I'm talking to people where you just need a good cry. Because you've been the one black person working on your jobs. When everything happens, you're the one black person everybody wants to go to. What do you think and how do you feel? You've been asked after so many lunches that you are tired of defending your blackness because there's a time where you just want to pull back and stop having to be so strong. You just want to cry. I'm, I'm talking to people that you haven't seen your grandchildren. You haven't seen your grandparents. You haven't talked to your parents. You, you're afraid to go to the grocery store, afraid to go back to school, afraid to get on the bus, afraid to go to school, afraid to go to church, afraid to go to spaces because of what's real in our world and church it just needs 
real a good a good a good cry. I haven't been able to go on vacation. I haven't been able to go across the country. I haven't been able to have experiences like you want. Your bank account. You've been doing different type of work on your job because you're just hoping not to get laid off your job. So you're working in fear and not in joy because you're wondering whether or not you're going to get fired. Your church, you just need. I just that makes you cry. Some things. Exile was is heavy. And I, I just want us to be honest this morning. Exile is heavy. And I, I've spent so much time myself even preaching to you all how 2020 is a year of clarity. 2020 is a year of adaptability and flexibility. 2020 and 2020 is all of that. But you know what? 2020 also on the other side of that pillow. Oh, my God. I, you, I, I mean, come, I wish y'all were honest with me today. I haven't seen my kids, haven't seen my grandkids, haven't seen my mama, haven't seen my daddy, haven't been able to go to the park, haven't been able to go to Six Flags. I'm afraid to touch the jungle gym. I'm afraid to touch the monkey bars. Ain't been able to go to the bar. Ain't been able to go get something to eat. I've been worried about these folk coughing. And if somebody sneezes around me, I am, fr- I mean, y'all, it's, and then not to mention, oh my God, Social injustice and marches and movements and and trigger statements and triggering people. And who did you vote for? Did you vote for so-and-so? Did you not vote for so-and-so? Should I park next to you? Are you going to do something to my car? Are you going to talk weird about me? Is it okay if I, I mean, church, is it okay if I get pulled over? We have police officers that go to our own church. What do people think about us when we do pull them over when they break the law? Church, there's so much that, frankly put, I think we just need a moment to sit back and cry. I'm tired of being strong. I know I ain't the only one. I'm tired of having to figure it out. Tired of having to make decisions that I've never had to make before. Tired of having to stretch in ways you never had to stretch before. Tired of not being able to solve issues the way you've solved issues before. Tired of Zoom. Oh my God, how many of you want an in-person meeting? Tired of, 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 of phone conversations on FaceTime. Tired of praying for people on FaceTime in hospital beds. As a pastor, y'all, you, y'all, our church was juking and packed back in January and February. Oh my God, we were killing it. I was anticipating a building move this year. I was anticipating some ministry opportunity. We were anticipating so much to do. And then COVID happens and quarantine happens. And church, that makes you weep. I can't even touch y'all. It makes you weep. And I'm not saying that out of it. I'm not saying that to gain empathy. I'm saying it out of honesty for all of us. Church, this year has been more interesting and, and, and difficult than we've ever experienced before. And I know a lot of us have been calling and needing to be strong. But I think sometimes we just need a moment to pause and to weep. Weep over what hasn't. Weep over what you wish could. Weep over what, what you haven't seen. Weep over what you haven't experienced. And weep over the reality that Jerusalem will never be like Jerusalem was before exile. They, they, they say that, that, that individuals who are in prison, imprisoned, their tears don't fall this way. Their tears fall this way. Uh, they say that black women's tears don't fall this way. They fall this way. Because I don't want anyone to perceive me as weak when I cry. I want you to have a chance today to weep over what hasn't been. I'm talking to college students. You haven't been able to have a college experience this year. And yes, the stuff has been adaptable and virtual, but oh my God, I'm talking to teachers who miss teaching your students in person. I'm I'm talking to individuals who your job has shifted completely. And you are afraid your skill set doesn't fit what the world is right now. And as much as we can train and teach on so much stuff, you're more afraid of church. I'm talking to those of you who've been furloughed because of a virus that has been mishandled in politics. And doctors are stre- and nurses are stretching themselves, being told to work while having COVID because people just don't want to wear a mask. I'm, I'm talking to black and brown people where you're tired of being the token where your experience and your body becomes the one experience of what it means to be black in America or brown in America. I'm, I'm talking to people who haven't had a chance to get out of your home, to have a break, to go on a date. And I want you to weep. I want you to cry. 
Because God shows us, I want you to see this, I'm not saying this in a negative way. God shows us that in my weeping, I'm not going and then going to weep in Jerusalem. I'm weeping as I get out of exile. Because I'm not going to let exile define me. I'm weeping as I leave from exile, headed back to the places where God needs me to be. I want you to see this, that my weeping is not an indicator that I've gotten comfortable with exile. My weeping is the indicator that I've been freed from exile. I hope y'all hear me. And that I'm headed back home. my, My crying is the indicator that God has set me free. And I'm no longer going to watch this. Let my emotions and my spirit and my prayer life stay in me. But I'm going to let that thing explode out and I'm going to let my tears be the definer that I've been set free from what others have been comfortable being bound in. I've been set free from something that I've been bound by and I'm looking for some folk who are comfortable with letting your emotions come out so that God can fill you back up with new emotion and new vision and new peace because watch this, the reason I'm crying watch it, is because I'm headed back to Jerusalem. I hope y'all hear me. The reason I'm weeping is I'm on my way back home and I know what I went through in exile, but I know what's on the way. Am I talking to anybody under the sound of my voice? The reason I'm crying today, the reason I'm weeping in my prayer time is not because I'm stuck in exile. It's because I made it through exile. I made it over exile. I made it through quarantine. I made it over I made it through all of this and if it had not been for God, I think I'm weeping over what I went through, but I'm rejoicing that I'm headed back. Am I talking anybody in the building. I'm declaring over my house. I'm headed home. I'm headed back to joy. I'm headed back to peace. I'm headed back to opportunity. I'm headed back to smiling more. I'm headed back to having peace in my home. I'm headed back to where God needs me to be because I'm not going to stay stuck in here because God says you can go back home. God, so that's where my weeping is powerful. My weeping, that's why scripture says weeping may endure for a night. Watch it, because sometimes weeping does endure for a night. But no matter how long I cry, joy has always got to come. And some of us are trying to abstain from weeping. No, I need you to cry. I need you to cry over what you lost in exile. I need you to cry over the memories you didn't make in exile. I need you to cry over the people and opportunities we lost in exile. And here's what I learned. Every step I take, I've got a little more peace. Every step I take, I've got a a little more joy. Every step I take, God is smiling on me. Every step I take, God is showing me more mercy. Am I talking to anybody in the building? It's time for me to keep on walking while I'm weeping because I'm not crying because I'm weak. I'm crying because I'm strong. I'm not crying because I'm down. I'm crying because I'm headed back up the King's Highway. I wish I had some folk under the sound of my voice who can throw in these comments. I'm headed back home. I'm headed back to joy. I'm headed back to peace. I'm headed back to no anxiety. I'm leaving my sorrows. I'm leaving anxiety. I'm leaving depression because you ain't welcome in my new home because I'm leaving you where you were to go to where God needs. I dare somebody right up in here. I'm headed home. I'm headed to new peace. I'm headed to new mercy. I'm headed to new joy. I'm headed to new possibility because God says it's time for me to cry while moving forward. Oh, I dare you. Watch this. Here's what I want you to do. It's an interactive part of the sermon. I dare everybody to stand up where you are. Come on, everybody. Stand up where you are. Come on. It's an interactive sermon today. Come on. I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm trying to get through Jeremiah today, but I need us to get back to Israel. Come on. I dare you to stand up where you are. Watch this. Can you go and just, if you are in a space with your family members, can you go hug someone? Come on. Just go hug them. Come on. Just go hug them. Come on. Hug, hug, hug exile out of them. God, I wish y'all, if you are by yourself at your house, I need you to embrace yourself and just hug exile out of you. Hug that mindset out of you. Hug that insecurity out of you because some of us need a real good hug. I dare you to go hug somebody and just hug hell out of them. Come on. I I know I sound crazy today, but I'm trying to help some of y'all. I dare you to go hug the insecurity out of them. Hug Zoom out of them. Hug anxiety out of them. Hug frustration out. Hug it out. And I dare you to begin to pray for them even right now. Come on. I know this interactive sermon. I dare you to begin to pray for them right now. Come on. Pray that God will remove and fill them up with his, the Holy Ghost. Fill them up with peace. Fill them up with the fruits of the Spirit. Fill them up with love, joy, peace, and long suffering. Come on, I dare you to hug out and let the tears flow. Let the frustration flow. Let the pain flow because we are headed back home and I've got to get out of this season. Come on, go ahead. Hug them. 
Come on, I know, I know it's weird. I know you're watching me, but don't watch me. Go hug your children and hug the fact they can't go to school because everything's going distant because of a second wave. Come on, hug the frustration of not having prom and not having football season and not having basketball season and not having tennis and soccer. Come on, hug out of them the pain and frustration because we're headed back home because we've got to get to Israel and exile is not going to define me any longer. Come on, I need a hug. That doctor, hug that lawyer, hug Hug that teacher, hug that admin, hug the furloughed, hug the laid off person, and hug the pain out of them. I'm I'm, 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 I'm headed to Israel. God, I hope y'all hear me. I'm I'm headed back home. I'm I'm headed back home. I'm, I'm headed to new mercies. I'm headed to new joy. I'm headed to new peace. I'm headed to new opportunity. I'm headed to new friendships. I'm headed to new relationships. I'm headed to new things. I'm headed back. says, God says, I need you to go and weep as you're going. I need you to weep. I need you to lament. Because watch this, when I control my emotions, my emotions, can I tell you, because some of you, under the sound of my voice, you feel like every time you turn around, something's kicking you. Every time you turn around, the enemy is hurting you. Every time you turn around, a situation's getting you. Can I, can, I ch- can I fix your mind? Can I check your mindset? I want you to call out what's kicking you so you can see how strong you are. Because watch it. While it kicked you, it didn't kill you. God, I... I ain't got nobody in this Anglican living room. I said, while it kicked you, it didn't hurt you, God. Y'all knew you'd stand up in church if we were in person right now. I said, while it kicked you, it didn't destroy you. It just showed you how strong you were. And now I, you can kick rocks. I wish I had somebody. But watch this. Here's, here's your tweet for the day. What used to kick me can kick rocks because I'm headed back home. I wish y'all heard me. Depression used to kick me, God. Anxiety used to kick me, y'all. I'm on one today. Uh, insecurity used to kick me. Uh, depression used to kick me but my anxiety can kick rocks because I'm headed back home I'm headed to new mercy and new joy because God said my enemies are going to be just so rise up and enemies be scattered and you head back home right, there's, there's something to be built God is raising up Ezra on the way home God I wish I had somebody who read their Bible. God is raising up Nehemiah in the king's cabinet who says there's something has been destroyed in my hometown. And God is raising up Nehemiah because as long as you go back home, God is raising up Ezra who's going to read the scroll and the word of God. But you've got to get back home. God is raising up leaders, but you've got to get back home. God is going to give you new enemies, but you got to get back home. Church, it's time. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done here. I'm sorry. It's time. It's time. It's time to go home. Because the reason I'm crying, watch this, because I got out of exile. Woo! Because watch this, exile, the worst storm in my life couldn't take my life. God, I wish y'all. Matter of fact, I got new life in exile because I was faithful in exile. And God, I produced in exile. Because remember, Jeremiah 29, I had new crops in exile. I could build in exile. I planted in exile so that the kingdom of God could expand even though I'm in exile. So I'm headed home with a new skill set. You know why? You know why some of you ought to be rejoicing? And I want to, here's my joy. So I want to go from weeping now to hope. Um, here's why I think a whole lot of us ought to be rejoicing. You're leaving exile with a new skill set. You didn't know how to use your computer back in January, but baby, you can use that thing. You didn't know how to Zoom and balance working from home with your children, but baby, you can do it. You didn't know how to, how to work three hours a day, but make it seem like it's eight hours, but you can do that. You didn't know you and your spouse could do the things y'all did uh, in, in Jesus' name, but now you got a new skill set. I wish I had somebody. You didn't know you could date virtually, but now you got a new skill set. You didn't know you could do what you do the way you do, how you do it, because you got a new skill set. And I'm headed home with a new skill set. I'm headed home with a heart that's been rendered towards God. I'm headed home with peace that surpasses all understanding because I'm not staying in exile. God's going to take care of my enemies. It's time for me to go home. It's time for us to go home. And can I bless you with the text? The text says, watch it, and at Israel and Judah is going to be together. Uh, cheers as you seek the Lord, as you go home. But well, then watch the text. text says, so then as I go home, watch this. Um, I'm going to give them um, a covenant 
um, and remind them of a covenant um, that they'll never forget. Um, God said, I'm going to give them a perpetual covenant. We're perpetual there in the Hebrew, the same way we see in Scripture, everlasting, forever, old, never ending. God says, watch this, I'm going to give you a promise that's never going to end. Now, let me tell you something. It's real easy for me to jump to Jesus right here, but it's not time to jump to Jesus yet. Um, God, whoo, hey, God, I... Don't mess up your living room. I hope you mess up your living room. God says, watch this, I'm going to put a promise on you. Um, hold up, back up. God says, I'm going to remind you of a promise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the promise I'm going to remind you of um, is something that I gave you when you went into exile in the first place. Okay. Um, we preached this last week. Uh, Jeremiah 31 says, um, that I will be their God. Um, they will be my people. And God paints this picture uh, of, what, of what life will be like after exile. Jerusalem, there'll be dancing. Jerusalem, there'll be peace. Uh, Jerusalem, there'll be joy. Okay. Um, <laughs> and so the promise that God gave them, God, I, whew, is, is in Jeremiah 32. God, I'm, about to, I'm blessing myself just preaching this, and I hope y'all blessed by this too. And, and so God says, as you head back home, as you, whew, as you, whew, as, as we, okay, I'm just, I'm, uh, as we head out, of trying to make America great again. Uh-huh, I said it. Uh, as we head out of, of, of what, of, of these fake courageous conversations that really are just conversations to make us feel good about our racism but not actually changing racism. As we head out of, of what it means to be furloughed but have a new skill set to start being an entrepreneur. As you head out of this season of having to adapt so much and now I can plant new roots. As we head out of a season where life has been difficult to constantly have my life berated by people who don't even know me. As we head out of this season, God says, watch this. I'm giving you, I'm, I'm reminding you of the covenant I put on you when you went in. Okay. Um, um, can, I, can I bless you? Can I bless your life? Go to Jeremiah chapter 32. Go to Jeremiah chapter 32. I'm going to show you this and go down to verse number 36. Go to verse number 36. 36. Go down to verse number 36 in Jeremiah 32. Look at the word of the Lord. It says this. You are saying because of war, hunger, terrible diseases, the city will be handed over to the king of Babylon. But the Lord God of Israel says about the kingdom of Babylon, I forced the people of Israel and Judah to leave their land because I was furious and angry with them. But soon I will gather them from the lands I forced them to go to and I will bring them back to this place where they will live safely. The people of Israel and Judah will be my people and I will be their God. I will make them truly want to be people with one goal. They will truly want to worship me with all their lives for their own good and for the good of the children after them. And look what it says here. Here's the promise. I will make an agreement with them that will last forever. I will never turn away from them. I will always do good to them. I will make them want to respect me so they never turn away from me again. I will enjoy doing good to them and my whole being, I will surely plant them in this land and make them grow. Verse number 42, this is what the Lord says. I have brought a great disaster on the people of Israel and Judah. In the same way, I will bring good things that I promised to do to them. You are saying this land is an empty desert without people or animals. It's been handed over to Babylonia but watch this but in the future people will again buy fields in this land they will use their money to buy fields they will sign and seal agreements they will call in witnesses they will buy fields in Benjamin and Jerusalem and Judah and the mountains and the hills and in Judah I will make everything as good for them as it once was what God is saying to us is that as we leave out of exile the promise I'm giving you is I will always do good to them I'm making an agreement with them. I will never go away from them. I will always be there by their side. They will always be prosperous. They will sign on new lands. They will trust in the Lord their God and they will buy fields in this region. I really want you to see this. The promise that God gave his people is that if we simply trust God and go back home and where God says that God is going to bless us with, the very thing that was destroyed because of our sin will be built up because of what God put inside of us. And I'm talking to some folk under the sound of my voice that God, I can thank God that God can still put promises on me that in spite of me, God still puts a promise on me in spite of what I did to God God will still put a promise on me and I'm talking to folk under the sound of my voice who know full and well God shouldn't put some promises on some of us, God shouldn't give us promises of restoration, God shouldn't give us his word on us but I thank God this morning that God
God still puts a promise on, I dare you to right now watch this, I dare you to testify the promise of God is on me. That's the reason I'm still working in this, the promise of God is on me. That's the reason exile didn't kill me, the promise of God is on me. That's the reason this season didn't take me out, the promise of God is on me. That's the reason I still got joy and sorrow, the promise of God is on me. That's the reason I still have hope for tomorrow, the promise of God is on me. And the promises of God are yes and amen. Now for some of y'all wondering, Pastor Justin, how do you know this promise works? How do you know this promise is fulfilled? How do you know God will come through? Well, I can tell you about my life. I'm sure you can tell me about your life. But can I tell you about one thing? The reason I know this promise comes fulfilled. Uh, okay, uh, on a hill called Calvary. God, I wish I had a, I wish, I wish I had a praying living room. I said, on a hill called Calvary, my Savior died. The Bible says that now that he they stretched him wide and they hung him along. But three days later, he got up because when God makes a promise, whoo! I said, when God makes a promise. I said, when God makes a promise, he always comes through. I wish I had somebody under the sound of my voice in your living room that can testify. So the reason I can cry and keep on walking is because he lives. <laughs> I can face tomorrow. I'm sorry, y'all. I wish I had a I wish I had somebody in this Anglican church. I said, because he lives, all fear is gone. I wish I had somebody in your Lutheran living room that can get rid of your house shoes and shout in your bathroom that you got a promise on you. I wish I had somebody in your Anglican kitchen that can forget where you are and begin to give God glory in your bathroom. Because the reason you can stand today, y'all excuse me, is I got a promise on me. The reason we're still alive today is you got a promise. I wish I'm looking for some Baptist folk. I'm looking for some churchy folk that can shout in your living room. That can shout in your kitchen. That can shout in your basement. The promise of God is on me. I said the promise of God is on me. I said the promise of God is on me. The promise of God is on me. I know you say, Pastor, why you say it so much? It don't take all that. I don't know who I'm talking to, but when I look back over this year and I see what I went through in March, it takes all that. When I see what I made it over in April, it takes all that. When I see what I made it through in May, it takes all that. I wish I had some folk, watch this, that can get your phone out and just film your own praise break and remind yourself, if I made it through June of 2020, I can keep on walking. If I made it through July of 2020, I can keep on walking because it does not yet appear what we shall be because the Lord is telling me that when I get home, I can plant and build with the skill set he gave me. I wish I had some folk who can testify exile could have taken me out, but I'm still here. Because here's my shout, y'all. It could have went the other way, but I'm still going to keep walking. It could have went the other way, but I'm still going to keep moving because I'm headed back, back home. I'm headed, I'm headed home. I'm headed home because I got a promise of God on me that was sealed on Calvary. I got a promise of God on me that was sealed on Calvary. And because the promise of God is yes and amen, here's my word to somebody. Be not dismayed. Lord have mercy. Whatever may be tied. Lord, God will. He'll take care of you. Yes, he will. I said, yes, he will. I got two people in here listening. I said, yes, he will. Y'all excuse us can we praise God can you help the folk helping me film praise God can someone just say yes he will he will make a way out of yes he will he will open doors yes he will he will get you back home yes he will exile won't take me out no it won't because I'm still headed back home I ain't worried about my enemies because I'm headed back home I'm not worried about what I'm going through because I got the promise of God all over me I I got the promise of God over me. Y'all, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I didn't mean to go there today. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to go there today. I didn't. But, but y'all, when you think about what we've been through this year, and when I cry those tears, and I find the strength that God gave me, y'all, I've got to shout and move and cry 
on my way home. So why did I have to get oil today? Why did I have to give oil today? Here's what I want you to do. I want you, as you head home, as you are at home, as you are at work, wherever you are, here's all I need you to do. I want you to grab that oil. Watch this. And I want you to walk around your house. And I know it's crazy and different, but I really want you to trust me on this. I need you to get that oil. I'm going to pray over your oil. And I want you to walk your own home. And we're going to anoint and consecrate our spaces because we're headed back home with new dreams and new visions and new skill sets. Yes, I cried. Yes, I got some bruises. But as for me and this house, I wish I had somebody under the mob. I said, as for me and this house, I did, a matter of fact, right now, I did every person in your house. I don't care if it's your kids, if it's you, if it's the dog. As for me and this house, come on, repeat after me. As for me and my house, as for me and my apartment, as for me and my home, as for me and my RV, come on, as for me and my trailer home as for me and my house we will serve the Lord so here's what I need you to do I need you to do I want us to get us to a posture of worship I want us to get into a posture of worship and a posture of adoration to God here's all I need you to do I need you to grab your oil grab your oil grab your oil grab your oil and I want you to go around every nook and cranny of your house whatever space in your life has been seen or you feel has been in exile. I need you to anoint it because we're entering into a new space. I, if that means you, some of y'all are gonna get your credit cards out. Go ahead, I'm, de I'm dead serious today. I need you to trust the anointing of God in my life. Get your credit cards out. God told me to do this about a month ago. And I, I've been sitting here saying, God, it's gonna be different and different, but you know what? I want you to consecrate your space. Get your credit cards out. Some of y'all need to get your computer cameras out because you've been on Zoom and you need to consecrate your Zoom meetings. Come on, I need you to get your phone out. I need you to get your credit card out. Get your Uber app out. I'm so serious. Get your bus pass out. Get go get the room ready get the dog out I don't really care what it is oh, open up the door because we're gonna call against every demon inside your house everything that's been against the future that God has on you I come against and by every single spirit that's been against what God has on the people in this house we come against it in the name of Jesus and so by the by the fact that you hear my voice and you didn't want your people to hear this word today anything that's against the power of God in this house will be gone someone say today anything that's against Against my marriage in this house will be gone today. Anything against my children in this house will be gone today. And by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come against Satan and any minions of the Antichrist. And we believe that the power of God and the yes of God is still more powerful than anything the world has to say. I dare you right now, grab your oil and begin to anoint your doors. Come on. Begin to anoint your children. Come on. Begin to anoint your dog. Begin to anoint your cat. Begin to anoint your gerbil. Begin to anoint your rabbit. Go anoint your kitchen. Come on. Y'all think I'm crazy. I need, I'm going to walk around the church. So I'm anointing stuff here. And begin to anoint. Come on. I dare you to get up. Go anointed. Come on. Go anointed. Go anointed. Come on. Y'all can walk with me around the church. We're going to anoint this thing. Come on. We're believing God for great things. Come on. I want you to anoint your job. I want you to anoint where you work. Anoint where. Anoint the spaces where God is telling you you're going to work. Anoint the spaces where God is telling you that you need to do your job. Anoint where you Zoom. Come on. And y'all think I'm crazy. Anoint where you Zoom. Anoint the spaces where God needs you to do your job. Anoint the spaces where God needs you to work harder. Anoint the spaces where you have intimate time. Anoint the spaces where you spend time with your spouse. Anoint the spaces where you spend time with your children. Anoint the spaces where you spend time with your loved ones. Anoint the spaces where you spend time alone. Anoint your bathroom. Anoint your car. Some of y'all need to run outside to your car and go anoint your car. Go anoint every single space that God is telling you to be a part of so that you recognize that God's power is anywhere, everywhere, at the same time, I need you to go anoint it. Come on, go anoint it. Go anoint it. Go anoint it. Come on, go anoint it. Devil, you are not welcome in my bathroom. Devil, you are not welcome in my kitchen. Come on, y'all think I'm crazy. Devil, you're not welcome in my kitchen. Devil, you're not welcome in my house. Come on, devil, you're not welcome in, on this space. Devil, I work here. You will not get me distracted. Devil, I'll spend time here. You will not get me. You are not welcome in my bedroom. You are not welcome in my marriage. Come on, come on. I need more Jesus here. Come on. Now, we're not going to talk to the devil, but Jesus, I need more of you in my kitchen. Come on. More of you on my job space. More of you in my Zoom area. More of you in the places where I work. More of you in the places where I'm with my children. I dare watch this. I dare parents watch this. Go grab your children and put oil on your hands. Y'all think I want you to grab this anointing today and just lay hands on your children and begin to speak life into your children. If you have, if you're married and you are at home, I dare husbands and wives right now. I catch this oil. I need to go lay hands on your spouse and just begin to speak life over your spouse. Come on. Just
just begin to speak a life into them. I dare you to lift your hands where you are and just speak a life into them. Come on, speak a life over them. Speak a life into your children. If you're at home by yourself, go ahead and lay hands on yourself and begin to speak a life into you. Come on, begin to speak a life into you. Remind you that the promise of God is on you. Come on, lay hands on him. Lay hands on your spouse. Lay hands on your children. Speak a life into them. Speak a life into them. Come on, speak a life over I come against anxiety. I come against depression. I come against insecurity. But I raise up the beauty inside of you. I raise up the handsome brother inside of you. I raise up the entrepreneur in you. I raise up the business owner in you. I raise up the leader in you. I raise up no fear in you. I raise up healing in you. I raise up anointing in you. Come on, speak life over them. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Grab this oil today. Come on, spread the kingdom of God. Plant a new field like Jeremiah had to plant. That y'all, we're going to go back home and plant a new field. Come on, speak a life over them. Now come on, switch. If you spoke life over you, I dare, I dare children watch this. Oh my God. I dare children to lay hands on your parents. Come on. And begin to speak a life into your parents. Come on. I dare children to lay hands on your parents and speak a life into them. Come on, parents. I dare you to lift your hands where you are and let your child pray over you. I dare you to let your other spouse pray over you. I dare you to let your friend pray over you. Come on, roommates, be praying over each other. Come on, be praying over them. Speak a life into them. Exile will not kill you because you've got new skill sets and new joy and new peace in you. Come on, come on, come on. Pray over them. Come on. New oil. Come on. New fresh oil. New oil because of old promises. New oil with old promises. Come on. I dare you to pray over yourself. Pray over your workspace. But listen to what God pours into you. Hallelujah. 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 That hand is lifted wherever you are. I know you're at home. That hand is lifted wherever you are. Come on. The hand is lifted wherever you are. Come on. We talked about postures of, 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 of giving. But also a posture of surrender. I need you in a posture of surrender wherever you are. Come on, in your living room. If you're watching this for the first time, this is just who we are. I believe there's new oil coming to where you are. I speak over every person in the sound of my voice. There's new oil where you are. I speak over every person in the sound of my voice to receive the visions of God for your life. I speak over every person in the sound of my voice that prosperity of emotions is coming to you. Prosperity of life is coming to you. I speak over every person on the sound of my voice. The same promise that God gave us in Jeremiah 32. I want you to be in a posture of receiving. A posture of receiving. And I want to speak the promise of God. I'm not going to give you anything that I have in my own life. I'm going to give you what the promise of God is. So you know I'm not making it up. Listen to the promise of God. Here is the power. I want you to have your hands in surrender. Hear me as I give this to you. God says, here is the promise I'm giving you. I make an agreement with you that will last forever. Here's the promise on you. I will, God will never turn away from you. I give you a promise of God that God says, I will always do good to you. I, God says, I will always make relationship with you. I will always enjoy doing good with you. And I will plant you and make you grow. This is what the Lord says over your house. I brought disaster on you. And I'm going to bring good things through you. You are saying where you are is not great. I've been working from home, God. I've been dealing with kids, God. I've been going back and forth to school, God. I've been taking COVID test after COVID test, God. I've been living in fear and worry, God. But listen what the text says, but in the future, you still will buy land. You still will possess land. You will use your money to buy fields. You will sign and seal agreements and call in witnesses. And you will buy fields because here's the promise over you, the last part of the promise. I will make everything good for you. That's the promise of God over you. And I dare if you believe it to shout, it is so where you are. I dare you to shout, it is so where you are. I dare you to comment, it is so where you are. Come on, that the promise of God is over me. God will make everything good happen to me. I will buy, I will own in this season. God over your house. The promise of God over your house. There's a promise of God over your house. There's a promise of God over your money. Here's what I want to do, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a prosperity preacher, but I've, God's been telling me this every day this week. 
those of you watch this who are desiring for God to give you financial outpour, that's all I want you to do. I don't have anything I can give you, but I just sense this in my spirit so bad all week long. And I've been hesitant to do it because I don't want to be labeled as a prosperity preacher because I'm not one. But I do believe that God, because the text says he brings it, I want to pray over your finances. And I'm, I'm believing for a financial outpour. I know it seems crazy and different, but I'm believing for financial offers. So I want you to grab your wallet just real quick, and I'm done. If you have your phone app, open up your Bank of America app, your Chase app, whatever it is. And I want to pray over every one of your finances just really quickly, and I'm done. I want to pray over your finances real quickly. I want to pray over your finances that I'm going to take my seat. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray over money today. God, I pray over wisdom with money today. I pray peace with money today. I pray joy with our money today. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you said in your word that you they will lack nothing and prosperity will be on them. So God, right now I pray prosperity over every single person under the sound of my voice. And God, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray God for financial outpour. It is so. A financial outpour for every believer who's believing in the oil and the anointing that you have on their life. God, I pray they lack nothing. I pray they never worry. I pray no bills are ever shut again. I pray, God, they never worry and cringe at the credit card machine. I pray, God, they never cringe in Cash App. I pray they never cringe on Venmo. I pray, God, they never wait for bits and pieces of something to come together, but they rejoice in the outpour you give them. God, I pray now in the strong name of Jesus for outpour, for increase, moving forward. I pray now, God, in the strong name of Jesus, that you shower financial increase over every one of your children. God, forgive us for the times where we haven't believed you for the resources and believed within you with the resources we have. And God, I believe in this season you are raising us by rate and giving us even increase in our finances. In the name of Jesus, somebody say it is so. It is so. Come on, I dare you right where you are.